What's up guys, welcome to the video. I'm sitting here in my house, which I purchased last year. And I'm about to tell you a little story about how this purchase went about and the numbers behind living in it at the moment. So if you're in for a little story and the numbers behind this house, then uh, sit back, relax and enjoy the video. But please bear in mind that I don't have any education within buying and selling houses or I'm not a CPA. I'm just telling my story and telling you how I got this. So I'm going to split this video into two parts. One, we're going to look at the story behind and then two, we're going to dive into the numbers later on and see if this makes any financial sense. It all starts out in 2015 when I was doing a study abroad semester in Australia where I lived with 14 other students in a house in Brisbane. The house was very poorly insulated, very thin walls and you could basically hear everything and we got a lot of complaints from the neighbors. But anyways, we had a very good time and we almost got evicted within two weeks. I'm not very proud of it, but that was just how it was. But the exciting part about it was the owner of that house which we lived in, who was a very humble and down to earth kind of retired guy who owned this house where 15 students lived. Not to mention the fact that he was raking in roughly 50,000 Danish kroner a month. So the guy had a revenue of roughly 50,000 Danish kroner each month, uh, not counting any utilities or any other bills that he might have had so I'm not really sure how much he made in profit but still 50,000 Danish kroner in revenue each month by having one house. So of course I got very excited and I thought this was a way to gain financial independence and maybe not rely solely on one job. So by living in that house with 14 other people I set a goal of owning a property once I finally got a job. After Australia, I finished university back in Denmark and I pretty much saved up as much as possible. You know, it's kind of difficult to save up when you're a student, but I still managed to save up some money. I started looking at properties, price ranges and prices in certain neighborhoods, you know, whether or not they had one or two bedrooms to it, etc. In 2017, I moved back to Greenland to start my new first job. I shared the living expenses with another colleague, so pretty much we divided the full expenses in two and I lived in the living room and he lived in a bedroom. The price was 5,000 Danish and it had an increase of 3% every year. What? While I was living in that house, I spent the days looking at properties within the three real estate agents that we do have here in Nuuk. I looked at price ranges as well, whether or not they had two or three bedrooms each in the house or whether or not it was a good neighborhood, a bad neighborhood. And I actually also went out to look at the places physically, just strolling around and having walks within the area of where the house was located. I still had a goal of finding a property and I now specified my goal a little bit further by saying I wanted to have a place where I could live, where the expenses would be the same as my current expenses, which was the 5,000 kroner or lower. After having browsed the internet for quite a while, within a year I found this first house. The house was an old rundown house. It definitely had some water damages. It definitely had mold issues, but it was located in a very good neighborhood and it was listed at an auction. The house was a one bedroom house, meaning that there were no bedrooms. You were basically living within the living room. And the size was 36 square meters, which is 388 square feet. So December 2018, I placed a bid on the house since it was listed at an auction. I had basically no idea of how many other people would bid on that house or what the price range it would be. So I pretty much blindly made a letter and said that I was willing to pay 450,000 Danish kroner for it. I then knew that I had to take out a loan also for some repairs and I estimated that to be around 300,000 Danish. But guess what? There were seven other bidders on that house and the winning bid was 889,000 Danish kroner for a 36 square meter house. So I pretty much ditched that house and then went on to look for another house. The second house I was looking at was a house where I was planning on living with two of my cousins but after having thought of it quite a while and looking at the numbers behind splitting a property into three ownerships, there would definitely be some issues if somebody wanted to get out of the deal or 
arguments and you name it. So I thought I would just leave that at that and then continue on to another house. The third house I went out to look at is the one I'm currently living in. And I went out to look at that in May 2019. The house is a townhouse of 83 square meters. It is in two stories and it has three bedrooms. The listing agent didn't include that there were three bedrooms. It only said that it had two. So I was pretty quick to pull the trigger when I knew that this actually had three bedrooms. So I could live in one of the bedrooms and I could rent out the two others. This house has a pretty good view. Whether you look to one or the other side, it's near the city center and there's a bathroom near my bedroom. I like that. The house was listed at 2.2 million Danish. In June, I ended up submitting a, an offer of 2.1 million after some back and forth with the owner. So that was the story behind. And now let's dive into the numbers if you're still here. Now we're at the numbers, so let's look at them. The way you do it here in Greenland is that you pay 5% down. You have 15% as a public loan or as a bank loan. And then you have 80% as a mortgage. I ended up getting a public loan with this one accounting for roughly 15% of the total purchase price. And I got a mortgage with an interest rate of 0.5%, which was currently the lowest and the lowest that has ever been for, I don't know how long, maybe ever. I think maybe ever, yeah. The interest rate 0.5%, well, you actually also had to add the bank lending margin on top of that. So it points out to 0.89%. Damn those banks. So total cash I had to put down was roughly 115,000 Danish and then plus 40,000 for furniture because this house was unfurnished, had no TV, no pots and pans, no hardware, no appliances, no nothing basically. So I had to go out and buy that for myself. If we're looking at the expenses, I'll have to browse down here to look at it while I read it out loud. We have a mortgage of 6,687 Danish kroner. We have a housing association fee of 775. Utilities accounting for roughly 1,450. Insurance 89, not that big of a deal. And then internet 899. This comes out to a total of 9,892 kroner. And then as I mentioned earlier, I also have rental income off of two rooms, which I rent out, which totals out to 8,200 kroner each month. But unfortunately that rental income is taxed at 42%, which is a personal income tax because I own this property personally. Luckily we do have some tax deductions for mortgage interest, utilities, housing association fee, and then the internet, since I rent two of the rooms out. The total amount I can deduct off my rental income is 4,472 kroner. So if we look at that math thing, we can see that I will make 6,634 kroner off of the 8,200 kroner of rental income. So my expenses, for living here is pretty much 3,258 kroner, which is roughly 500 US dollars. If you compare that to 5,000 kroner, which I used to pay before, then you can definitely see that I am saving money by living here. So I definitely made my goal off of whether or not to have the same expenses or actually live cheaper than I lived before when I was living at a rental place. But wait, it gets better. By also each month paying down the mortgage interest, I also gain some equity in this house, which amount to 4,193 kroner, which is roughly 645 American dollars. That is to say, if the house stays at the same value, which could change dramatically, it could go up, it could go down, you never know. So I am pretty much the one taking on that risk. Also the risk of any water damages within the house and anything going wrong pretty much with this house. I take on that risk for myself. I also saved up the money to put down on this property. Not to mention the fact that I put down almost three years worth of rental for the other place I was living at. But to sum it up, have I regretted buying this house? No, I definitely haven't. And I am out looking for more and hopefully in the near future, I will get some other real rental properties 
not owned as a private person, but hopefully owned within a company of some sort. So if you like the video, please feel free to give me a like or subscribe if you believe in me in my further quests for rental houses. And also if you have any questions, please feel free to drop me a comment down below. I will try to answer them, but I am not a professional. I am not a tax accountant. So everything I have said here, don't try to sue me or anything by the things I have told you because they're just my personal experiences and I'm just trying to make it out.